fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Benny Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, presents by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Sometimes you just don't realize what a good buddy one of your friends is until he's away for a while. Maybe he's home from school with a cold or something. You look at his empty desk in class and, gee, you really miss him. Well, here's something real nice you can do for him. Take over a big, cheery Betty Crocker yellow cake. The kind that says, hurry back soon, we think you're great. A cake like this, of course, just has to be perfect. And you can be sure it will be when it's made with Betty Crocker's yellow cake mix. Your mom will love to bake it. Or you can be a chef and bake it yourself. Any guy can turn out a perfect cake with this mix. All the special things are right in the package. You just add water and two fresh eggs for a perfect cake every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. It's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. And wait till he tastes that first slice. Mmm, a real He-Man every crumbs delectable Betty Crocker yellow cake. Bake one. It's fun. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the path on the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver, the Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Get ready, folks. I'll see you. Silver. Hooray! At noon one Saturday, a government employee named Clem Babson locked the door of the land office in Euchre Flats and headed for the livery stable. The thin, wispy-haired clerk looked at the clear sky overhead and grinned with pleasure as he contemplated the luxury of an afternoon to himself. Ah, it's a fine day. An excellent day to pursue a hobby far more interesting to Clem than the routine task of recording gold claims for men who had struck it rich. Clem was a frustrated soldier at heart. Too small and frail to qualify for the army, he contented himself collecting relics of historic battles. And this afternoon promised to be particularly rewarding. He was passing Sheriff Tim Dare's office when the lawman called through the open door. Hi there, uh, Hello, Tim. I'm on my way to rent a horse. Planning to leave town on your day off, eh? Only half a day, Tim. A fellow who's done a lot of engines fighting with a cavalry was in the office this morning. Yeah, what about it? He said the engines and the army fought a couple of big battles up in Desolation Hills about 20 years ago. That's right, they did. I've never looked for relics up there, so I plan to spend this afternoon and tomorrow searching the place. For what? Well, arrowheads, canteens, sabers, shells, guns, whatever I can find. <laughs> I'm never savvy why you don't spend your spare time looking for something worthwhile. What? Instead of digging through battlefields like an addle-headed gopher. What do you mean, worthwhile? Well, there's no one around here who knows more about war than you do. Gold bear no oil. You want me to turn prospector, huh? Well, you'll never get rich this way. <laughs> I've never heard of an honest lawman getting rich either, Tim. <laughs> I'll see you when I get back to town. Hey, uh, stop at my place for coffee and some of Mary's homemade donuts on your way home. Eh? Thanks, I'll do that. <laughs> It was nearly two o'clock when Clem reached the rocky area known as Desolation Hills, north of town. For more than an hour, he studied the ground, intent on the search for mementos of battle. Oh, oh there. Leaving his rented horse ground hitched nearby, he was examining a dry creek bed carefully. The rays of the sun glinted on a shiny object at his feet. He picked it up and gasped. Gold! Putting the nugget into his pocket, Clem took out his pocket knife. I wonder if there's more here. Get it, get it, get it. Some 
distant south of the site where Clem made his discovery, two down-and-out petty thieves named Gabe Anchor and Lefty Chance were traveling through the hills. Having been run out of towns to the south, they hoped to better themselves in Euchre Flats. Tired, dusty, and hungry, Lefty Chance grumbled, I'm dead ready to thirst you, Gabe. Don't look at me. My canteen's empty. How much further do we have to travel to reach Euchre Flats? Oh, three, four hours will get us there. The horses are too near worn out to make it in less time. On top of being worn out, mine's got a loose shoe. Hey, cheer up, Lefty. There's a water hole ahead. Huh? Where? You see the sun shining on the water? Yeah. Get it good. Get up. Come get on, up. get up. Get up. Horses are thirsty. We'll water them after we fill the canteen. Yeah. Water's warm, but at least it's wet. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, let the horses at it. Looks like they were plenty dry. I'm glad we found this place. Hey, what's that? Hammering of some kind. Not too far away from here either. I didn't see anybody when we drew rain. With boulders the size of these around, it's hard to see anyone. They don't savvy why a fella tried building anything in this place. Come here, Lefty. Huh? Around the side of the boulder. That's what we heard. You fell upon a stake in the ground. Yeah. I reckon he didn't hear us draw rain. Hey, look. He's fastening a paper to the stake, Abe. Wonder how much cash he's carrying. He uh, might have some grub in his saddlebag. Just what I was thinking. Come on. We'll help ourselves to his money and supplies. The stake Clem Babson pounded into the ground bore a carefully lettered paper claiming the legal amount of land permitted anyone staking a claim. After years of working in the land office recording other men's claims, Clem himself had found gold. Dazed by his unexpected good fortune, he turned from the stake. Unless I'm badly mistaken, this is a mighty rich strike. You there? What? We want to talk to you. Long experience in the land office had taught the mild-mannered government clerk all that could be learned about claim jumpers. Fearing that the two strangers might try to steal his strike, Clem reached for his holster. Gabe saw the move. He snatched his gun. Get him, Gabe. Oh! oh. That chunk had one for his gun. You hit him all right. Dead? Yeah, I'll see. He's not moving. Yeah, he, he's hurt bad, Gabe. He'll be gone in a couple of minutes. Your bullet hit him in the head. He shouldn't have tried to draw. If he does, we'll be hunted for murder. We might be if anyone had seen us shoot him. <laughs> see if he's got any cash. I'll look in his saddlebag for grub. Yeah, all right, but I don't like being mixed up in the shooting. He asked for it. Yeah, maybe so, but he... Hey. What's wrong? Hey, look. Look what he had in his pocket. His money? It's gold, Gabe. Gold nuggets. God. See if he has any more of them. He's that stake in the ground. Huh? Wait till I see what he wrote on the paper he fastened to it. What's that got to do with it? Hey, it's just what I figured. Look, Gabe, it's a claim notice. Claim notice? He was taking a claim here. That's why he was pounding the stake in the ground. The notice proves it. See, here's the date, today, huh? and the time. Hey, you're right. I'll bet ten years of my life he found the nuggets here. I'll take him. Yeah. This is our lucky day, Gabe. We'll get as much gold as we can find. We'll do better than that. We'll get all the gold that's here. We'll jump his claim. Leaving Glenn Babson where he had fallen, the two thieves swung to the saddle and raced toward town. Half an hour later, Lefty's tired horse was slowing visibly. Can't you get any more speed out of that critter? Come on, you miserable piece of buzzard bait. Get up there. Nah, he's slowing down, Lefty. Get up there. Come on. He's done in. He can't keep up the pace. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. Uh, uh, critter's not only worn out, he's got a loose shoe. Should have left him back at the claim and taken the other fellow's horse. Uh, it's just as well you didn't take that gray. Someone in town might recognize it. Well, what do we do now? My chestnut will be able to make it to Euchre Flats. I'll go on to the land office to register the claim. Well, what about me? You'd better go back to the claim now. Get rid of that fellow's body and turn his horse loose. Where am I going to get rid of the body? We've no tools for burying it. I don't care what you do with it as long as it's out of sight. After I register the claim, I'll head back there. All right. Bring some supplies with you. I'm half stirred. I'll see you later. 
Get up. Get up. One of these days, I'll buy myself a good horse. The finest in these parts. All right. Come on, you farmers. Get up. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and his Indian friend Tonto were riding through the desolation hills toward Euchre Flats. The masked man planned to wait outside town while Tonto bought the supplies they needed. As they passed near the spot where Clem had found gold, Tonto exclaimed, He must have it. Look, that man's trying to mount. Uh, Looks like him hurt. We'll try to help him. Run, 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 run. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you do it is the question. And here's one that has that these people have to say. Sure enough, take Midwestern champions, for instance. When Bobby Feller takes the mound, the outfield boys sit on the ground. That Wheaties pitching leaves them there, watching batters fan the air. And when we name our Wheaties crew, Big Ted Klazuski's in there, too. He'll face those hurlers day or night and knock their fastballs out of sight. Bob Feller and Ted Klazuski both know that Wheaties magic. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties, and you'll be do 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 when I to continue. With the light of the setting sun shining in his pain-dimmed eyes, Clem Babson didn't notice the Lone Ranger's mask until the tall man had dismounted. He's been wounded, Toto. Ah. Oh. You can hang on to saddle pummel to stand up. Oh, we'd like to help you. Your, your mask. Take it easy. We're not outlaws. Your crooks, just like those other two. Ready? Look out. He's fallen. I've got him. Oh, let go. Saddle to grab gun. I have nothing left to steal. Two skunks already jumped my claim. We're here to help you, not rob you. Now, sit down. I'll take a look at your wound. Oh. You don't talk like a crook, but that mask... Forget the mask. Here, medicine keeps him a puppy. Oh, thanks, Toto. Here, canteen. Now, you take drink. Oh, thanks, Indian. I, I would like a drink. Who shot you? Two fellas. I, I never saw either one of them before, but I'll never forget the looks of them. Oh? One of them's tall... Has a heavy black beard. Wears a checkered shirt and dungarees. What about the other one? He's a redhead. A little taller than I am. Oh, thanks for the canteen. Mm -hmm. All right. How bad am I hurt, mister? It's a scalp wound. I'll have the bandage in place in just a minute. You said the men who shot you were strangers? That's right. But I've got their names. Huh? How you get names? I've got them here on this piece of paper they left fastened to the stake I put in the ground. I found it when I came to. I noticed the stake when we stopped. I found gold here this afternoon. I no sooner finished staking claim to it than those two rattlers appeared. When I saw this paper, I knew what happened. They copied what I wrote in their own handwriting, stuck it on this stake, and went into town. Claim jumpers, huh? Yep. One's named Lefty Chance. His partner's Gabe Anchor. There, that takes care of your wound, Mr. Oh, Babson. Clem Babson. I'm the land office agent in Euchre Flats. Land office agent? That's right. You register gold claims in land office? Yes, yes. It's a one-man office engine. I've worked there for two years. <laughs> oh, that good joke on crooks. <laughs> huh? Crooks get big surprise when them try and register a claim. Say, that's right. I, I never thought of that. Well, <laughs> doggone it. They may be on their way to town now to register the claim. I wouldn't be surprised. They have no way of knowing who I am. Fact is, they've probably left me for dead. Now here, tracks on ground. One on a right horse with loose shoe. The tracks probably lead to Euchre Flats. Uh, you feel strong enough to ride? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I feel a lot better now. Thanks to you two. You'd better report what happened to the sheriff. I'll do that, mister. Now tell him how you and the engine helped me. Here, I'll help you to mount. Oh, uh, thanks. Thanks. There. We'll ride with him, Toto, and follow these tracks. Be savvy. Easy, steady, big fellow. Oh, get him up. Get him up. Get him. Get him. Done 
dusk was falling rapidly when the three riders saw a horseman coming toward them. Clem Babson studied him for a moment, then exclaimed, It's one of those crooks, the red-headed fellow who shot me. Are you sure? Dead sure. He didn't see us. He recognizes me. See him turning his horse? And I get away. Don't let him get away. Stop him. Come on, Silver. Get the skirt. Don't let him get away. The crook and move the killer. The mighty Silver pulled ahead of Clem and Toto. Yes. As Lefty spurred his nearly exhausted roan, having recognized Clem, he knew capture was inevitable unless he could escape. A quick look over his shoulder at the powerful white stallion panicked Lefty. He drew his gun and tried to fire accurately at the Lone Ranger. But the shots were wild. He saw the Lone Ranger pick up his lariat. Go on, Ranger, I'll pull you from the saddle. I'll kill you! Not unless you start to take aim. The lariat arced through the air. Lefty dodged to escape the loop, but it settled over his shoulders. And before he could free himself... Oh, 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 oh. He was jerked from the saddle. As he hit the ground, his weary horse slowed to a halt. While the masked man dismounted and hurried to Lefty's side, Tonto and Clem drew rein. Oh, 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 oh. I'm hurt. Stand up. Oh, oh, I must have broken every bone in my body. Oh, get gone, oh. he Good. I will tie his hand behind his back. You no good trains, jumping rat. Left me for dead, didn't you? Uh, I didn't shoot you. It was my partner, Gabe. He's the one who gunned you. Oh, Gabe's your partner. You must be Lefty Chan. Uh, how do you know? I got your name off the claim that you left on the stake where I found my gold. You can't prove we jumped your claim. I won't have to. The gold's ours. My partner's in town now filing legal claim to it. How's he going to file legal claim to it with the land office closed? Hey, might have reached the office before it closed. He couldn't have. The office closed at noon. Huh? That's right. And it's not due to open till Monday morning at 9 o'clock. Uh, maybe Gabe found the land office agent. Maybe talked him into opening the office special. I'm the land office agent. What? He'd have to go some to talk me into registering his claim to my gold. I'll search you right now for the nugget you stole from me. You, you're the land office agent? It looks like you and your partner tried to jump the wrong claim. Well, a dead red it looks. Uh, and here are my nuggets. Well, now, listen, I didn't mean any harm. I wasn't the one who shot Save you. Save your lies. You were probably on your way back to the claim right now to make sure I was dead. No, no. If the masked man and engine hadn't been with me, you'd have finished me for sure. No, that's not true. I can explain. Save your explanations for the sheriff. You're going to jail. <laughs> In Euchre Flats, Gabe Anchor had already discovered that the land office was locked for the day. Confident that he had nothing to fear from the local law, he entered Sheriff Tim Dare's office to inquire. Sheriff, well, I find the land office agent. Well, sir, he's out of town as far as I know, stranger. Why? I have a claim to register. I've looked all over town for him. And like I said, he's not in town. Uh, if I'd known that, I wouldn't have wasted so much time looking for him. What's your name, stranger? Gabe Anchor. You've uh, found gold, eh? Well, my partner and I discovered it. I'm downright anxious to get it registered. Uh, might as well relax till Monday morning, Gabe. The land office will be open then at 9 o'clock. Well, if I've got to wait till then, I reckon there's not much I can do. Yeah. Uh, sounds like the agent's coming here now, Gabe. Do you think he'd open the office long enough to register my claim? Jim, I've got a shooting to report and a claim jumping a to turn in. You! As Clem Babson entered the office, Gabe snatched his gun from the holster. Before he could fire, Sheriff Tim Dare grabbed his arm. Yeah, you took it. You took your dirty claim jumper? Step inside, Lefty. And remember, you're covered. All right, drop the gun, Gabe. No, no, oh! All right, all right. Let go of my arm, sir. Gabe. Left me. What happened? I was counting on you to help me, Gabe. Who's the masked man? He and Tonto were friends of mine. They saved my life. But, but that man. The mask doesn't mean this gent's a crook. These two are. Left to you, bungling jughead. How'd you get caught? I thought you were going back to bury this crook. He and the masked man and the engine met me on a trail. Oh, I knew what happened. I was hauled from the saddle, hard tied and disarmed. They tried to kill me, Tim. What? That bearded critter shot me. Well, in that case, I'll put them both behind bars. Come on, you two. Hey, you don't have to push me out going. Lucky if you hadn't bugged your family. Well, Clem, that takes care of the claim jumpers. I reckon it does, mister. Thanks to you and Tonto. I'll not forget what you've done for me, either. I'll start working my claim and see that you get a sizable reward. Seeing you well enough to enjoy your good fortune is reward enough, Clem. I hope we meet again. Well, hold on. Where are you going? We're heading north as soon as Connor picks up the supplies we need. Easy, steady, big fellow. Adios. But doggone it, man. <laughs> well, me go get supplies and meet mask friend. Head to town. The good thing it's dark. No one will notice his mask and mistake him for a crook. <laughs> That's right. Tono, I'd like to do something for you and him. Oh, me glad we able to help you. I know you're planning to shove on, but couldn't I send a reward somewhere to be held for you? If my claim turns out to be as good as I think it will, I'll be a rich man. 
Uh, you and that first fella who try reward Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Not right, Clem. Great uh, jumping grasshoppers. Is that who he is? Uh-huh. Well, adios, Clem. What? And me wish you plenty good luck with gold claims. Goodbye. Let Let him up. Follow him. What's that about a gold claim? Yeah, I found gold this afternoon, Tim. Gold? Yep, I've struck it rich. Yeah, that's the best news I've ever heard, Clem. I told you you should have spent your time looking for gold instead of those worthless old relics no one would want. Oh, fine relic hunter I am, Tim. Yeah? I just missed a chance to get a silver bullet from the Lone Ranger. I am silver! Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Crandall Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.